Hi everyone, welcome along to my channel. Um, my name's Amanda, my friends call me Mandy. I just wanted to tell you a bit about myself. Um, I disassociated from the organisation last month and this was because for a long time I felt that the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses were not being 100% honest with people. So I started doing an in-depth study, probably the end of March time. And that's when I realised I couldn't follow them any longer, not with the, the lies that they tell. Um, so I wanted to talk about their 607 date. Um, they say that that was the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, if you look in the scripture at Ezra 6 verses 15, it says that um, this was the sixth year reign of Darius. Now, Darius would be the Persian. Um, he reigned in 622 BCE when his dad, Cambyses II, was killed. That's when Darius the Persian started to reign because Darius the Mede had already died in 539. So this is relating to Darius the Persian. I mean, if you add um, 70 years on a 516, you come up with um, 586, which is the actual destruction of Jerusalem date. I don't understand how they can say it was 607 because logically, if you take 70 years off 6, 607, you get 539. So you would logically think that that was the rebuilt date, but it wasn't. So that's mince, what they're talking about. So I wanted to look at that. Um, now, in the Ezra 1, 1 verses 1, it says, In the first year of Cyrus of Persia, he made a proclamation, and that was in 539. But it was Darius the Mede that took over the kingdom in 539. Um, and you can find that in Daniel 5 verse 30. It says that Belshazzar was killed and um, Darius the Mede took over. Um, and that was in 539. So I wanted to look. Now I found during my three month study, I looked at Watchtower magazines and stuff. But I began to realise that the deeper stuff that you re really need the proper answers to, you'll find it in the insight books. Don't look at any of the other any other stuff apart from the insight books. And um, you've really got to dig, dig for information. So I've been looking at the insight books and I've, I've gained all the information from that point. Um, talking about the Jerusalem's destruction and the rebuilding. Now, in their insight books, volume two, Page 1232 and 1233. I'll read it to you what it says. It says, At Jerusalem, the temple altar was erected in the seventh month, Ethanim, or Tishrei, September, October. Under that direction, or Zerubbabel, get it right, and high priest Jeshua, that's in Ezra 3, verses 1 and 2. And in the second year, in the second month, Zev, or Ayar, that's April, May, of 536, the actual construction of the temple began. You'll find that in, <coughs> excuse me, in Ezra 3 verses 8. Now, recognising, sorry, it says, recognising the bad motive of the non-Jews who asked to have a share in the rebuilding work, Zerubbabel, Jeshua and the heads of the paternal house stated, you have nothing to do with us in building a house to our God. For we ourselves shall together build to Jehovah, the God of Israel, just as King Cyrus, the King of Persia, has commanded us. Ezra 4 verses 1 to 3. These non-Jews, however, continued to dishearten the temple rebuilders and finally, in 522, succeeded in having an official ban placed on the work. Now that was the first year of King Darius, a Darius the Persian. Two years later, in 520, stirred up by the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, 
Zerubbabel and Jeshua, or Joshua, courageously resumed the con construction of the temple despite the van the ban, and that's in Ezra four verses twenty three and twenty four, five verses one and two, and Haggai one verses one, twelve and fourteen, and Zechariah one verses one. Thereafter. An investigation of the Persian archives vindicated the legality of their work, Ezra 6 verses 1 to 12. Throughout, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah continued to encourage Zerubbabel, strengthening him for the work and assuring him of divine favour. And you'll find that in Haggai 2 verses 2 and 4. And 21 to 23 and Zechariah 4 verses 6 to 10. Finally, in 516, 515, the temple was completed. Ezra 6 verses 13 and 15. So the Bible clearly states that the temple was rebuilt in 516, which was Darius the Persian's sixth year of reign. The governing body try and hide that fact, but the Bible's not wrong. And even in their insight books, they tell you themselves. So I remember, I mean, I've only been in since um, 2004. I remember always being told, seek, seek the truth and you'll be set free um, and to keep studying the Bible and, you know, listen and learn. And, and they're kind of goading you in a way because they give you surface stuff to learn, which isn't the truth. They give you the surface stuff, but they don't give you the truth. And that's all pertaining to their 607, their 1914 and their 1919 dates, because 607 was not the destruction of Jerusalem. The Bible tells you the facts. They're even their own insight books. Volume 2, page 1232 and 1233 tells you the, those same facts. So when you add 70 years onto 516, you get 586. That's the day that is in all archaeological evidence. Uh, scholars accept that date. And um, the Bible tells you that date when you work it out. So there's no way that you can deny it. I've tried to tell my husband all these things, but he's not interested. In fact, he thinks I'm talking rubbish and he doesn't know what I'm studying, but it's lies, allegedly. So that is one piece of information. I also wanted to talk about, they've obviously had to, during those time scales, they've had to change the dates of kings, the reign dates, to, for it to fit in. Um, what I've also found out during all these studies, which I'll go into in further videos, there's a Darius the Mede, as I told you. His name was also called Ugbaru. And there's a Darius the Persian, who was known as Gubaru. So there's Darius the Mede and Darius the Persian. It was Darius the Mede that took over the kingdom in 539. So that wasn't even the exile date because it was meant to be, the exile date was meant to be taken over by a Persian. That exile date was actually 547 and you'll find that in 2nd Chronicles. Let me just check if I've got the date. 2nd Chronicles 6 verses 20, I think it is, um, if you look that up. The other things I wanted to mention is um, there are two Nebuchadnezzars that, that are in that sort of time scale where they've had to change stuff. There's Nebuchadnezzar, whose father was Nabonidus, and there's Nebuchadnezzar, whose father was Nabopolassar. Now, both these Nebuchadnezzars, both of them, had sons called Belshazzar. It's crazy. There's so much information, so many things to look up. There were two Josiahs, two Zedekiahs, two Jehoiakims, two Jehoiachins, two 
but it just goes the list goes on um so as i said the i went into the insight books as well and i just thought i'd look up the reigns and the kings um so if if you even look in the insight book volume two page four five seven it tells you the eighth year of nebuchadnezzar is 617 now that's the eighth year of birth he was actually born in 625 but the governing body want to make people believe that he actually started to reign in 625 um there's so much information out there and i've gathered up so much um in my previous videos i've done an hour long video of um charts dates kings births deaths if you look that up um so i'll keep posting videos i'll keep letting you know the information i've learned because i don't want this to stop and i won't stop it either um another thing they claim sorry this is a wee side bit is that jesus started to rule in 1914 now that's total rubbish but i'll go into that in another video as well i just want to say to everybody keep seeking the truth and just keep being a loving person because bearing witness is what's in your heart so hopefully this information can get out there so that not one other single person joins that cult Take care, everybody. Bye.